More ripoffs. The savings and loan scandal could cost half a trillion dollars. But in Washington, the big question still is who gets the blame? Today, the president and his congressional critics gave a preview of the positions that they'll be taking to the voters later this year. More on that now from NBC's John Cochran. Trying to deflect charges that he has pussyfooted on SNL fraud, President Bush told federal prosecutors from all over the country to intensify their efforts. We will not rest until the cheats and the chiselers and the charlatans uh, spend a large chunk of their lives behind the bars of a federal prison. Democrats smelling blood on the SNL issue accused Bush of using federal attorneys as props for a photo op. And I don't know what it costs to fly all those U.S. attorneys in here, but I assume it costs a fair amount. I don't think they got a thing done. Bush did promise to give prosecutors more help, including more investigators. Democrats fired back that the new Bush plan is a rehash of the one unveiled by his own Justice Department last December, which also called for more investigators. The president told us today uh, that he was going to hire 202 FBI agents. On December 7th, Attorney General Thornburg said on page 4 of his release, a total of 202 FBI agents. Democrats think the president is vulnerable partly because his son Neil is under investigation as a former director of a bankrupt thrift firm. Republicans say Democrats are desperate for an issue. And some slick consultants believe it's the best way to proceed is to attack President Bush. And the best way to take on President Bush with a record-breaking popularity and a job accrual rating is to somehow go after him on an SNL matter. Both parties have suddenly discovered that voters are angry about the SNL fiasco and will be angrier if asked to pay for it with higher taxes. John Cochran, NBC News, the White House. Savings and loan crisis is finally getting under the skin of some politicians. Congressmen who oversee the savings and loan industry have voted to spend $152 million next year to prosecute crooked SNL officials. That is $50 million more than President Bush wants to spend. As ABC Stephen Ogg reports from Washington tonight, the politicians are clearly worried the public has discovered the SNL mess and is getting angry. The handwriting was quite literally on the wall at a House banking subcommittee today where everybody agreed that the people who looted the savings and loans ought to go to jail. But congressmen of both parties seem more worried about keeping their own jobs. It doesn't make any difference who you are. But if you're running in a district and you have an opponent and you have a challenger, he is going to make issue out of the SNL scandal. Anunzio ought to know. He's already under attack in his home district because he accepted campaign donations from Charles Keating, the former SNL executive who's been sued for fraud by the government. The ranking Republican said it's not the fault of Congress, it's the fault of states like Texas and California, whose banking regulations were not tough enough. It may be that maybe some of the state legislatures in those states should be under more attack than the members of Congress seem to be on this issue. The subcommittee had called in the Justice Department to complain that it's taking too long to prosecute those who caused the SNL mess. But the head of the department's criminal division disagreed. He said convicted SNL officials had been sentenced to a total of 381 years in prison. 200 defendants convicted, 306 defendants charged, fines imposed of almost $800,000. Ironically, the big banner at the hearing room temporarily displaced a portrait of former committee chairman Fernand St. Germain. He was defeated two years ago amid allegations of improprieties involving savings and loans. Stephen Ogg, ABC News, Washington.